Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 75, Testing with VCR. In this episode, you'll learn how to set up tests to use VCR to record responses from APIs and then use those responses when running the test so it doesn't hit the APIs all the time. If you want to code along, you'll just need a test that is currently live calling an API, something maybe with Google Maps or Stripe. I'll be using the Invoice app that I created live last year. So what is VCR? No, it's not the old recording device to record your TV and watch movies. Probably dating myself, but I do remember when we got our first VCR. It was really fun to record TV when you couldn't watch it and then watch it again. And VCR did take the inspiration for the name from that device. It does record something so you can play it back. So what does VCR do? It records your test suite's HTTP interactions and then replay them during future test runs for fast, deterministic, accurate tests. You run the test once and VCR will record the HTTP request to wherever you want to save it, whatever file structure makes sense for you. Then you run it again and VCR will replay the response from IANA.org when the HTTP request is made. This test is now fast, all right? No HTTP requests are made anymore. Deterministic, the test will continue to pass even if you're offline or IANA.org goes down for maintenance and accurate. The response will contain the same headers and body you get from a real request. Sounds awesome, right? Speed up your tests, not have to depend on being on the internet, great. So let's add it to our project. We're going to add in our group. You could do just test. I went ahead and put it in group development and test the gem VCR. And then I'm using WebMock. When you look at the documentation, there are a couple of options, but I'm going to go ahead and use WebMock. Then you need to configure to use VCR. In your Rails helper, you will require VCR and then add this configuration. So the first one is where you want to save these cassettes is what they call them. I have a folder called spec because I'm using R spec. And then I'm going to use a folder called support and then call the folder where we'll save all of those as VCR underscore cassettes. And just in case you don't know, that's what the actual tape was called way back when we used VCRs. We're going to hook into WebMock. That's what I chose to use. Now this is specifically for R spec. You're going to configure R spec metadata. And there were a couple of different configurations listed in their documentation. And this one is the one that worked best for me. You can see some old documentation at different points. So I used a couple of different sources to put together what worked best. And that worked best for me. So it's going to use metadata. And I will link to where you can read more about that later. I also needed to add ignore localhost true because it kept trying to find some URL that wasn't there. So digging into a couple of issues on VCR, everyone suggested this and that's what worked. And I did some testing and I needed that for both using Selenium WebDriver and WebKit. So I did need that in order for it to work for me. You may put it in, it works great, take it out, see if it continues to work. You may want to play with that a little bit. Jumping into the project, let's go to the gem file and then come on down to our group development and test. Again, you could put it just in test. I think that would work fine as well. And so we're going to go ahead and bundle so that we add those gems. And it's looking for them. It adds a couple of dependencies as well. And there we go. Pretty easy. Now let's go to spec and then our rails helper and let's add the require VCR and then I'm going to scroll on down to right above our spec config your do to put that new configuration and there we are so let's save that next up we need to use it in our tests we're going to add comma colon VCR just after the scenario description. So for example, scenario by visiting payment page and enters CC info and sees redirect page. All right, so that's an example, whatever scenario you have going on, and then a comma, colon, VCR. And then in my case, we need JS true for this test. So comma, JS, colon, true. If you put VCR 
after JS true, it does not work. So be sure to put it directly after your description. And you can certainly use VCR in non-feature specs. Any unit test will work as well. It's just that I chose a feature spec to be my example. So let's jump into that feature spec. And here it is all the way over there. Let's add just that quick little line there and save. And then I was actually going and deleting what we had created on Stripe because it was creating that test data. So I'm taking that out now. I don't need that anymore. And so it's running. I have Selenium set up just to show you how it's all working. So it's gonna run the test, put everything together, and then it's recording everything. And now it's done, yay, it continues to pass. So now if we check out our support folder, and dig on down, we see the recording. So this recorded what happened when we reached out to Stripe to make that call. And if you scroll on down, you'll see the response in the body. And so that's everything we usually get from Stripe. And you can just check that out. And here's some more of the body. The different requests, you know, post, um, get, delete, they have, that's, that's why it's recording it a couple of different times and you'll see that. So let's go ahead and run it again and you'll see this time it's a lot faster. I'm still, you know, running up my browser and then see, oh my gosh, that was so much faster in between that part and it still passes. One last thing to add would be to set how often to re-record. Just like VCRs in the past, if you ran them over and over and over again, eventually it may degrade. <laughs> well, the tape's not gonna degrade, but your API calls may change. Stripe may have an update. Google Maps may have an update. So you want to be sure to re-record on a regular basis. Now, where I found the suggestion actually re-recorded every day, I think that's a little much for my project, but it may be, you know, something you want to look at. So I decided to re-record every 30 days. So it's the number of seconds in an hour, all right, times however many hours. And so I did 24 hours in a day. So then I said that would be for 30 days. You may want to do it every week. It depends on what kind of HTTP request you're making. If you're scraping a website, then you may want to run it every day. That makes sense. But this is an API that doesn't update you know, all that often. So I'm just going to do it every 30 days. So you would just add that to your VCR configurations and it's set to go. And I'm gonna run it again just to be sure because I did make a difference. And this time I ran it with WebKit just so you can see that running and yes, it does work. All right, that's it for this episode. Here are some resources I promised you. You can go to the documentation page for VCR. They actually point you to other places to look. So that's all the links are on there. Here is a Stack Overflow question that led me in the right direction for fixing up the local host issue. Here's a blog post that I used to find the re-record suggestion. And then here's an issue as well to check out for more information on that local host issue. Thanks so much for watching. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up. I have other exciting content other than Ruby snacks and things I put on YouTube. So be sure to sign up so that you know what's coming. And hey, if you're not already subscribed on YouTube, click that big red ruby to do so. You'll get the videos just a little bit before everybody else. And here are some other options of videos that might interest you. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.